following closed circuit is for NBC affiliate chief engineers. The subject, K-Band, NBC's final countdown. Hi, I'm Don Cavell, again, operations on the K-Band satellite system. On this closed circuit, I'm going to tell you about the current effort that's pulling the system together this week and our timetable for phasing out of the landlines during the next weeks. Our plan is to retain the landlines in place as a backup facility only until the final performance elements of our K-band system are in place and consistent. Let's start by telling you that the most of our K-band affiliates were successful in the tests we conducted during the last two closed circuits. Their switching transitions were smooth. You saw the tape I ran last Thursday from KYW Philadelphia. The switching system works well, but as we expected, there would still be a lot of cleanup to do in getting all of the ground station hardware to work with all of the satellite network management system software. We're very fortunate that it's coming together so quickly, and we want to thank you for your excellent responses to the two questionnaires. Some of our stations reported that no switching took place at all. That could be caused by equipment that should have been in remote and by a malfunction in the command receivers. The new software, identified as 109, really made the station switch whereas we found that the older version, 103, was not a consistent performer. Some stations needed new address codes, and some of our computer software did too. To summarize, the station should be in remote with both command receivers operational, 109 software loaded, and the correct address sent and received, and that station will switch, especially now since we are sending out double commands on the two transponders simultaneously. It will switch. Next, we found that some stations reported that the transitions were not smooth. That is correctable by having the frame sync in mode 2 and the 109 software loaded. The right software can help the frame sync do a better job in covering that transition. You know, our two closed circuits really put the system to the ultimate test, making it do a match frame edit while you were watching. We didn't switch in black, we switched between the exact two same pictures and talked through the entire sequence. Our tests were designed to show up any flaws to you very clearly. A few stations reported that the video level changed. A change that lasted meant that our New York uplinks needed better matching. A momentary change meant that the 1E receiver might not be matched to the 1R receiver. Remember, in any switch, you see the 1E receiver first on destination 1R, while the 1R receiver is retuning, and then you see the 1R receiver. A very few stations heard audio pops during the transition. And that again may be an unmatched 1E receiver momentarily appearing on 1R as the switch is made, or an imbalance of DC voltage in the Ditech switcher. All of your responses were carefully reported to Comsat and Harris for immediate follow-up. They worked over the Easter weekend and now have 109 software in every site controller and are cleaning up critical items at 18 affiliates today. That's the current effort directed towards our landline timetable and getting this system off the ground. As soon as the Comsat Harris work is done by Wednesday, we will begin a six step plan right away to reduce the number of hours of programming we feed into the landline network. And we hope to start doing this by the end of this week, just as soon as each ground station has been remotely inspected by SkyPath via your status return equipment. Here's a calendar for a week to show you the blocks of time will eliminate. And here's our landline network feeds in the eastern and in the central time zones. You see the mountain affiliates have been off landlines for a year now and the Pacific affiliates have been off landlines for two months. So we're going to keep all these landlines here for another few weeks while we gradually reduce the programming on them. Step one. The weekday afternoon programs will not be fed on landlines, and I will wire you on the AIN before each one of these steps happen. Step one could start this Thursday. We can have confidence in going to step one because 22 of our K-Band affiliates have not had landlines during this time period for a year now. The SNMS switching occurs only during station breaks at 1 p.m. and 4 or 4.30 p.m. New York time, and we began switching your 1R feed during this time period back last March 22nd. So, nothing new is going to happen on step one. Not having landline backup during this period should not be a problem for anyone. One note, however, and that is our New England friends up here air sectional commercials during this time period. They're the only ones who do. 
We started switching commercial islands to them on April 3rd, using both K-band and landlines in parallel. So attention, you New England stations, right here in Hartford, Springfield, Providence, Boston, Portland, and Hanover. Be sure your K-band ground station is up to speed because the parallel landline operation will not be available in a few days. Step two, next we will not feed tonight, late night, and sunrise to the landlines, probably right after the NAB ends in Las Vegas like uh, April 18th. The Tonight Show has sectional commercials all over the country, and the SNMS switching system will be used in full when we start step two. Again, only minimal station switching is required for sunrise and today in the morning, and we've been doing that since March 22nd. Step three, add Saturday and Sunday mornings to the no landline plan. Following that, step four, the Today Show and the weekend morning block of programs will not be on landlines. Step five, the prime time schedule not on landlines. We're really rolling now, and there's not much left for AT&T to watch anymore. Step six is when sports and all is deleted. When we get to steps two and three, we'll be taking a hard look at disconnecting stations from the landline network even before the next steps have occurred. That's our plan, and with your help, we'll all be there in a week or two or three. How can you help? Report troubles. Hound Skypath if the troubles don't get fixed, particularly U7 stations in New England, Bangor, Boston, Hanover, Hartford, Portland, Providence, and Springfield. If you're working well, the New England leg could be the first to go. How can you help? Report troubles. We have a new 800 number for you to call. 1-800-NBC-6677. You'll automatically get routed into either New York or Burbank Skypath, depending on where you're calling from. 1-800-NBC-6677. Use it. If you really need an emergency feed on the landlines, call that number. But we'll kill the feed as soon as you're back in business. And one last thing. If you want to keep your local AT&T channel after we disconnect the network, call Hank at this number in New York. The new AT&T tariff will be effective April 27th. Well, thanks for your attention and help, and we'll see you at the NAB. to horizontal rate of all the stereo components. The question was the RCA Exciter TTU, excuse me, what, 40? TTU E44. Um, what vintage is it? If it's pretty new, we had some discussions with RCA very recently. They indicated that their latest generation of uh, UHF exciters uh, were going to be direct FM. Would work without a problem. Okay, thank you for calling. Okay. Um, in answer to the uh, question about performing uh, rights, we, uh, we got some more information while you were on there a minute ago, Eric. The um, uh, record companies pay the performers and the... Um, the Eric Small, uh, could you hang on just a minute? Uh, the... Um, uh, ASCAP and BMI licenses of the stations are uh, used for, for that, just like they are for records. Okay. Hi, can I help you? Hold on. Hi there. Good, how are you? Yeah. Well, not initially, Joe. And where are you now, Joe? Oh, my goodness. Last time I saw you, you were at, uh, uh, working for Howard in uh, Phoenix, right? Okay. The question, uh, the question is, will we be day parting? And um, uh, the answer to that, uh, Joe, is that we will not be day parting uh, initially um, uh, because we'll be playing a fairly, uh, a fairly short list. Uh, it will be, it will be a, a, a mid-range uh, blend, uh, and we'll not try to go uh, uh, to small targets at night or, or, or at any other time. Um, now that. 
that doesn't say we won't do uh, a little bit. At some point in the future, we may uh, we may find that it's uh, it's convenient. We have the research to do it, but um, uh, we'll try to stay in the center uh, to the music that they all like on a rotation that um, on a rotation that everyone can uh, uh, can live with. The question was, are we basically going to be using the RAM research techniques? And um, uh, the answer is that uh, that, that technique, uh, which, which is a particular method of, uh, of performing um, uh, the music research, will be uh, one of the methods we use. Uh, uh, Joe, we're concerned uh, in this project, we're concerned about um, uh, some other studies that we have which indicate that there might be a phenomenon uh, such as video burnout, where the song is still good. As you recall, uh, uh, Joe, uh, with, with RAM, uh, we were able to tell the product cycle of the song, how long it lasted and get it off when it was no longer popular. Uh, in, in the case of, of video, we find uh, uh, studies which indicate that the video may burn out faster than the audio does. So while the song is still good, that the, that the uh, people may be tired of seeing the same, the same pictures associated with it. So, We'll probably have to develop uh, uh, a different technique to, uh, to check on that and some other, uh, some other aspects of it. But that, that basic technique um, uh, is, is the one used in almost all of these re uh, music research endeavors. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for calling. It's good to talk to you. Okay. Bye. Well, now that I know Joe's in Tampa, I know where I'm going some weekend soon. <laughs> Hi, this is John Papp. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's a good question. Let me uh, ask the second part first and remind me what the first part was. Uh, how, does, how is it formatted and how does one get in and out for commercials? As I mentioned to one caller, that was the last question we expected and this was the first one we expected. Um, the, the breaks are filled with a, with a, uh, a selection um, and, and or uh, promo material and or public service material so that um, uh, there's something on the air at all times, and you're simply cued uh, 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 inaudibly when it's time uh, to take it. Uh, you take it for as long as you want to run commercials and then, and then rejoin the network. Uh, we developed um, uh, the system that, um, uh, that, that operated Bonneville Broadcasting System Satellite Service in such a way that um, uh, literally there were with, with, a, with a fixed format uh, uh, I don't want to say hundreds of, of options, but there were, there were numerous options. So the, the, the flex clock idea will be adapted to this programming so that you can pick and choose how many commercials you want to run, where you want to break, and, uh, and when you want to rejoin. Uh, yeah, you had a second question, I think. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, the, uh, to get in and out at the top and bottom of the hour, the question is, would the station format their own open and close? And the answer to that is yes. Our, our programming is going to be without disc jockeys, without, uh, without anything other than graphics. Graphics to, to describe or to name the, the title and artist of the, of the tune uh, and uh, possibly promote ahead within the half hour. Uh, we will not be doing uh, uh, anything other than the videos beyond that. Now your options at the station, and I, you said you were an independent uh, UHF. Your options at the station are unlimited. You can, you can uh, turn it on uh, after you go home at night and just let it run with a with a machine to throw in station breaks, or if you prefer to, uh, uh, to, um, uh, you can go hire personalities or get the radio personalities to do. Uh, to do um, uh, picture overs over the intros, where so so you literally can then customize uh, the way you use the program in your particular market. And I imagine that there are uh, a number of stations uh, like yourself that will have uh, uh, n uh, numbers of ideas of how to use it. Okay, thanks for calling. Well, that was the first question we expected to get. <clears throat> and, uh, I think we've got about. Um, uh, seven or eight minutes left, and I, uh, uh, the number to call is on the screen. The phone is open right now. As you see, we're using one line, and it's live, so when it, uh, 
it's time to call, it's time to call. Eric, uh, any uh, th uh, thoughts? We're getting in sort of to the wrap-up phase here. Let me take this one. Hi, this is John Patton. Okay, why don't you take Eric first, and then I'll take a sip of water, and then you can come back to me, okay? Hang on, here's Eric. Hi. Okay, the question is, what's the peak deviation on the SAP, the second audio program channel, and will narrowband FMs be permitted in the areas, uh, in the buffer zones between the uh, subcarriers? I'll answer the second question first. Uh, no, nothing will be permitted. Uh, no additional uh, subcarriers will be permitted if you are complying with the BTSC standards. That is, if you have a subcarrier, a pilot carrier at H. Uh, it was quite a job to squeeze the existing signals into the subcarrier without serious beat product problems. And any additional subcarriers would probably wreck a lot of havoc. Um, on the deviation, I have here in front of me the uh, FCC, the recommendations that were made by the BTSC to the FCC. And I think the number is 40 kilohertz, but I will check. In fact, why don't you talk to John Patton with, um, here it is, the modulation of the oral carrier by the second audio program shall comply uh, plus or minus 15 kilohertz deviation is the number. Hang on, we'll give you to, give you to John. <coughs> Hi. Uh, the, the, the question is, how will the station that we select in a particular market be, uh, be determined in case we have uh, three or four that, uh, that want the service? And the answer uh, to that is strictly on the basis of, of the number of hours that they're willing to clear and the, uh, and the amount that they're willing to, uh, to pay for the service. Uh, we, we don't necessarily think it has to be uh, uh, exclusive. We think that there might be cases where a particular station may want to run it um, on Friday and Saturday nights late, and another station might want to run it at a different time period entirely. So we're open to discussion with you on that. Uh, it will not be based on the strength of the station uh, alone. It will be based uh, more on uh, the, uh, the question of how much you're willing uh, to clear and what we feel the long-term potential of getting ratings in that market is. Yes, our compensation is totally cash. There will be no barter. It'll, it will be all cash. And we're suggesting that, uh, that there is some price at which you would, uh, you would like to have uh, this programming source available to you. And, um, uh, and we're asking you to communicate with us over the next uh, few days and, uh, and uh, let us uh, uh, tell us what that is. And we'll, uh, uh, we'll take it from there and get back to you. And, uh, and uh, that's how we'll, we'll make the decision. Okay, thank you for calling. I, we're, thank you. That's um, all the time we're going to have for telephone calls, so uh, I think I'll just leave this off the hook. It's probably the best idea. There we are. Um, so let's wind up uh, by giving you some, some more information. Uh, first, Eric, we're going to put up a, uh, a slide that tells them uh, where they can get a hold of you uh, um, uh, after the program for more information. Why don't, here it is right now. Why don't you give? Okay, one a couple of sources for additional information. If you have questions, if you didn't get your call through today, please feel free to call me, uh, write me. The other thing is there is an extensive body of documentation on this available from the Electronic Industries Association. Um, if, you, if you contact them directly, uh, they can provide you with a great deal more information or call us. We can Xerox some of it for you or tell you where to get it. Thank you. Did you give your phone number, uh, Eric? Uh, yeah, the phone number is 212-625-7333. We tend to keep uh, fairly late hours. There's usually somebody there to talk to until about uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good. And on the, on the programming questions, you can uh, contact uh, either Marge or myself at Patent Broadcast Management. Our address is on the screen. The number is area 201-569. 1703, and we'll be most happy to talk to you and provide you with further information. 
Just by way of wrap up, once again, um, High Intensity Television Services, HITS for short, will be broadcasting a 24 hour a day music video program starting this fall. And uh, our ideas are unique, we think, in five specific areas. I'll go through them one more time. First, it's live, 24 hour a day, music video programming by satellite. Second, no barter, no trade, we take no inventory. Third, we're offering this service to you at your price. You tell us what you would pay for it, when you want to run it. Four, charter subscribers will be offered the option to match any other offers in the market. And five, programming is going to be totally researched to assure the maximum audience uh, generally of adults 18 to 49. Thank you for joining us today and um, we're um, going to wrap it up at this point I think and just uh, uh, take a leisurely farewell. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.